Hi guys, I hope you're doing well and in this video now we're going to be discussing about the law of equimarginal utility or the law of equi also known as the law of equimarginal principle. So in the previous videos we discussed how a rational consumer allocates his resources or his given income and how does he rationalizes or maximizes his total utility given a single product or a single good, right? A single commodity, maybe good A or maybe good B, right? And we saw that how, to what extent would he, you know, how many units will he buy with his given income in order to maximize his utility. That is maximize his total utility and maximize his consumer surplus. So we came to the conclusion that if there is a, you know, one good or one commodity, then a uh, consumer would optimize his number of units where the last unit he consumes um, and the margin utility for that last unit equals to the price paid for that unit. And this law was applicable for one commodity or a single commodity, right? That is, going to be consuming uh, as many units and he would go, go on consuming them because he'll be gaining margin utility. And he would go on consuming them until the margin utility exceeds the price. And when a point comes and margin utility equals the price, he would s stop buying it. So the total number of units would be his max, his his uh, units that he will consume to maximize his total utility. But this was applicable when there is only one commodity. Now, guys, what if there are two commodities? What if there are two goods? Let's say that he has a limited income, let's say of ten dollars, and now he has to buy two goods. That is good A. He he needs to allocate his given income between two goods. That is good A and good B. Good A, good A and good B could be anything, maybe ice cream and chocolates or whatever. So so if with a given income we need to allocate resources in such a way that we can optimize the consumption and if we want to buy some units of good A and some units of good B, so how many units of good A and good B should we buy in order to maximize our total utility that has been gained from good A and good B as a whole, right? So if, if, if that's a situation given to us that we want to spend our limited budget given our two goods or maybe more than two goods, right? So how will we allocate our resources then? How will a consumer optimize his bundle? How will a consumer act rationally? How would he maximize total utility given there are more than one goods? In that case, the law of equi-marginal utility gives us or provides us some help. And the law of equi-marginal principle kicks in and it tells us that, okay, wait, oh, hang on, I have a solution for you. And it tells us that, that you know, a consumer um, will, will basically get the highest utility from a given level of income when the ratio of the marginal utilities is equal to the ratio of the prices. Now what I mean by that, just hang on and explain it to you, but let's see what I've written here. So I've said that the equi marginal utility helps the consumer decide the optimum combination or bundle of two goods or more than two goods consumed, right? So what is the optimum combination that we will decide according to the equi margin utility principle. So this principle or this rule will only be applicable for more than one good, right? Two or more goods, basically. So given a consumer has limited or a fixed income or a fixed budget, basically, the consumer has to rationally allocate his income between the two goods he might like to consume, obviously. What we are saying, in other words, is that with a given level of income, a consumer has to decide the optimum bundle of goods and services to spend his income on, such that in a way that he that his total utility is maximized. So the objective uh, of the equi marginal principle is to help the consumer decide the optimum combination or the optimum bundle of goods. That's the objective of the equi marginal principle. And if that happens, if the optimum bundle of goods or uh, optimum bundle of goods, when we are saying bundle of goods, obviously it means more than one good. So it's two or more, right? But to make our model simpler, we'll assume that there are two goods so that we can actually understand how this model works. So the objective is to maximize total utility with a given income and we are saying that we, our income is fixed, our income is scarce and with a given limited income we have to allocate our resources in such a way that we need to buy a certain amount of goods A or certain amount of, and certain amount of goods B and goods B, good B and then uh, in such a way that the amount of good A that we consume and the amount of good B that we consume maximizes our total utility, right? Having said that, what we are saying is that um, so so th this is basically the rule for rational consumer behavior so if you say that the equi marginal principle equi marginal principle is basically a rule for um, rational consumer behavior it's a rule for rational consumer behavior right secondly what it states is that it states that it states the equi marginal principle states 
this equi merger principle states that the you know that the consumer states that the consumer gets the highest utility he gets the highest utility or the maximum utility from a given level of income from a fixed income or a given income when the when the when the what when the ratio ratio of what ratio of the marginal utilities marginal utilities basically when the ratio of the marginal utilities between the two goods when the ratio of the marginal utilities of the two goods that is good a and good b of the two goods is equal to equal to the ratio of the prices now i'm pretty sure that it doesn't make sense to you right now but just hang on let me give me some time to explain this so basically what i'm trying to say is that the ratio of the marginal utility of the two goods that is let's say let's assume that these two goods are good a and good b which could be anything ice cream or chocolates let's say so what i'm saying is that the marginal utility of a that is the marginal utility of good a divided by the marginal utility of good b that is because we're calculating the ratio right we are saying the ratio of the marginal utility so marginal utility of a divided by the marginal utility of b basically is exactly equal to the price of a divided by the price of b so the ratio of the marginal utility is equal to the ratio of the prices so what we are saying is that the ratio of marginal utility between the two goods is equal to the ratio of the prices of these two goods and when this happens basically um, this is the equi marginal principle and this is the optimum bundle and the optimum combination of goods and using this principle we are we will actually see how can a consumer with his given income um, allocate his resources in a way that maximizes his consumer surplus and maximizes his total utility um, that he derives from the consumption of these goods now guys um, in some of the books the equi marginal principle um, is also written as um that the the the, the equi marginal the formula for the equi marginal principle is also given as that the marginal utility of a divided by the price of a is equals to the marginal utility of b divided by the price of b now both are the same thing by the way these two formulas are exactly the same i'll tell you how so for example the formula that i have written is marginal utility of a divided by the marginal utility of b is equals to the price of a over price of b so this is the equi marginal principle stating that the marginal util the ratio of the marginal utilities of the two goods is equal to the price ratio between these two goods right now if you cross let's let's cross multiply them let's take let's just cross multiply them so it would be marginal utility of a times price of b equals to uh price of a times this goes over here times marginal utility of b so you know so if marginal utility of a times price of b is equal to the price of a times marginal utility of b so what i can do here what i can do is that i can uh if this is being multiplied uh and th if, if these two are being multiplied then there's an is equals to sign over here so i can bring the price of a over here and i can you know bring the price of b over here and i can divide them right so i could so this equation can also be expressed as marginal utility of a over bring price of a over here divide by price of a is equals to the marginal utility of b which is this divided by you bring you basically bring price of b over here you divide the marginal utility of b with the price of b divided by the price of b right so basically this is the equi marginal principle is it's basically the same thing this equation has been simplified and then it becomes this thing it 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 can be expressed in this so basically the equi marginal principle can be expressed in this form as well it could be expressed in this form as well both mean the same thing now first of all remember that let's but in the in our examples we are going to be uh, which form are we going to be using we are going to be using this form however the example that i will do in my next video i will explain it through both the forms because they mean the same thing uh, by the way you can write both forms in the exam it's just the same it's just this is just the simplified version of the equi, equi merger principle by the way so basically remember that when we are saying so another thing uh, because now i'm going to be doing an example but in the next video but for but before i end this video um i just wanted to give an intro intro on the equi marginal principle on what the equi marginal principle is but how does it actually works how will it maximize total utility with a given income we are going to be using an example for that so that it becomes 
clear for you because in your P3 MCQs you will be asked to mark the point where which maximizes the bundle uh, of total uh, select a bundle which maximizes total utility so you need to understand the mechanism of how this equi marginal principle works don't just rote learn the theory that they both should be equal because a lot of students um, rote learn it they know that if they both are equal so it's the uh, you, you could say it's consumer equilibrium so basically this is this is consumer equilibrium right Consumer equilibrium is the point that is maximizing total utility. So this is consumer equilibrium basically. But then you need to understand how is this and why is this consumer equilibrium and what is the mechanism behind this consumer equilibrium. Okay guys, so so one more thing, one last thing for this video is that whenever remember that if you write it in this form that you say that the marginal utility of A over price of A is equals to marginal utility of B divided by price of B. So, let, so let's take an example. Let's say that the so let's say that maybe you maybe let's say if you consume a let's call it marginal utility so the marginal utility that you derive from consuming uh, a unit of a is let's say maybe ten dollars right while okay so just a second so let's say that the marginal utility you derive from consuming a is let's say now i'm going to be expressing utility over here in utils right because um, it can be measured either in utils or in money value as well so it's, it's just up to me how i want to use it but for, as far as the equimarger principle is concerned we are assuming that we're measuring utility in utils so if i say that the marginal utility uh, mar and so, so if i say if the, if the marginal utility for a is let's say maybe um, 10 utils right while the price of a is let's say uh, maybe um, four dollars while the while the marginal utility of b is let's say maybe six utils while the price of b is let's say three dollars right so if i put these values in this equation right so what i'm getting is i'm getting marginal utility of a over price of a which is obviously um 10 utils now I'm not going to be equating both of these right now because this is not my purpose. I'm just telling you what it actually means. So if I if I put marginal utility of A over price of A, so it would be, it would be 10 utils divided by the price of A that is $4. And if I put the marginal utility of B over price of B, so it would be 6 utils over $3. So basically, um, you, you, so, 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 so basically what I'm doing is that the marginal utility of A over price of A that is 10 utils over $4 gives me a value of uh, uh, 10, 10 over 4 would, I'm assuming it will give me 2 point, um, sorry, it will give me 2.5 utils per dollar, right, per dollar. And this would give me um, 2 utils per dollar. So this would give me, this would give me 2.5 utils per dollar and this would give me 2 utils per dollar. So basically, what we did over here is that when we divide the marginal utility divide by price of A, that is we are saying that the marginal utility derived from the consumption of one unit of A is 10 new utils, while the price I'm going to be paying for A is $4. And if I divide 10 by 4, so basically technically what I'm saying is that in order to gain a marginal utility of for A of 10 utils, in order to gain a utility of 10 utils by consuming one unit of A, I need to pay a price that is equivalent to four dollars so paying four dollars would have helped me gain 10 utils and paying three dollars would help me gain six utils but then if i want to calculate how much is the price how much is the amount of utility that i will gain by paying only one dollar so what i need to do is that i need to divide 10 by 4 and i need to divide 6 by 3. so 10 by 4 is giving me 2.5 utils and this is giving me the utility per dollar and 6 by 3 is giving me an answer of 2 utils and this is also giving me utils per dollar. So basically remember that this equation that when we say that the marginal utility of A is divided by the price of A, we are actually calculating the marginal utility per dollar for A. And the same applies with B as well. If I divide marginal utility of B with the price of B, what I'm getting is I'm getting marginal utility, sorry, I'm getting marginal utility per dollar that is for one dollar for b 
because I am saying that I am getting a utility of 10 utils uh, by paying $4. $4 gains me 10 ut utils, so how much would $1 gain me? So if I divide them, so basically technically I am getting margin utility per dollar for A and then similarly margin utility per dollar for B. So, so basically in this video what we learned is what the equity margin principle is and that applies to when we want to buy um, two goods or more goods with a given fixed income and how would a consumer optimize his bundle of goods that is what amount of good A he will buy or what amount of good B will he buy. Basically we want to, we want to see how much, how much good A and how much good B will basically maximize his total utility. So it could be maybe two units of A and maybe one unit of B or maybe let's say two units of B or one unit of A but whatever the case is or maybe three units of A or one unit of B that depends and we'll see this in the next um, example when we I will be explaining the whole mechanism behind this utility theory. But for this video understand that this is the equimarger principle it could be written in this form as well as simplified in this form as well but this form is just telling us the margin utility per dollar and it's it's basically telling us that if the margin utility um, per dollar for A is equal to the margin utility per dollar for B and when this happens that is the point where the consumer um, should stop substituting good A and good B and that is the point that basically maximizes a consumer's total utility and he should buy that amount of good A and that amount of good B that amount of good A and that amount of good B where where at a point where these two become equal and when they become equal at that point that is a point where the consumer should stop buying or stop consuming because technically what will happen is that at once this point is achieved all of his incomes income or his limited budget will be exhausted and that is a point where he has maximized total utility but how does this process work how will this actually work we'll see that in the next example video so guys i hope you enjoyed this video i'll see you all in the next video until then take care